Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to June 11, 2019 Board of Selectmen's meeting. Could I have a roll call, please? Um, all five Board of Selectmen are here, including the Town Administrator and Town Council. All right, a Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. Bakayaki, can you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Announcements, uh, let's start with, well, you just got back, Alan, but we'll start with you because you might have the fewest. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 right. I said that jokingly, you know that, right? Yes, I've been away for a while. Not long enough, though. Uh, we have coming up June 29th with a rain date of June 30th. Uh, Wareham Historical Society has the, a car show. Uh, and there'll be food, entertainment, live band, etc. This will be over at Elm Street at the uh, facility where Organa Brands is, same parking lot area there. Uh, there'll also be the July 4th Antiques Fair on the green, on the 4th, obviously. Uh, on July 13th, uh, the OBA is doing a pig roast and entertainment band, and also we'll be doing a car show there as well. That will be from 12 o'clock in the afternoon until 6 o'clock at night. And that's all I have for announcements. Okay, Mr. Manis. Uh, I would just like to say that it seems to have had an uptick in the um, number of people applying for committee positions, but there's still a number of them that we need uh, filled. So go online and uh, look at the committee openings. Um, and we need people to fill these positions. Um, the Charter of View Committee is still looking for people, um, as, as is the um, Housing Authority. We need two more members on the Housing Authority. So please uh, consider that, and uh, thank you. Peter. Uh, I don't know if Mary has it. Do you have the, uh, the Wareham England presentation in the folder? Nope. Uh, I know the Historical Society is, uh, is, there are people coming over from Wareham, England. I guess they're sort of our across the pond uh, ambassadors, if you will. And they're going to be doing a presentation uh, with the Historical Society on the 24th, I believe, at 7 o'clock. Uh, but check with the Historical Society Facebook page or their website to, to figure out exactly where it is. I, I would guess that it's probably at the old Methodist Meeting Hall, but uh, just make sure of that so you don't go to the wrong place. These are people that uh, came over from England, I believe, back in 2014 yep. with our celebration. Yes, and they're, they're invading once again, so welcome them at, the, uh, at their presentation on the 24th. Okay. Mary? Nope, I have nothing. Okay, citizens' comments. Is there anyone here to speak to the board this evening? No, she stays home. Huh? <laughs> She's not here? What, she too tired? Too tired. After the trip? All right, board comments. Alan. Uh, yeah, we have one thing that's out there that uh, I apologize that since I was away last week in particular, uh, the energy aggregation, which had been passed a long time ago at town meeting, I believe unanimously actually, uh, took us a few years to get into the queue to get in with some possible savings. Uh, we did get notified. Uh, the announcement really should have been made last week. Unfortunately, it didn't get made. Uh, to give people a heads up that the letter was going out to everybody on Monday. Uh, I'll try and do this as quickly as I can. The idea is that it locks you in for a period of time. This particular contract is 17 months. We tried to get in originally with the SERPA, which is our local regional area with 27 communities. Uh, because of, we have to go through town meeting, et cetera, we did not make the time frame to get in with that first group, which is where there was a fairly substantial savings of about on average of $150 a year at that time, back a few years ago. We had to wait a couple of years before the rates became advantageous to even consider making the change. So we're in a, a group of only five right now, and it's for 17 months. The reason for this odd number is that the group that we originally should have been with, their group was up in 17 months, and at that time frame, we can loop back into the original group, and the savings will be quite a bit more. The savings for the first six months are probably gonna be very small, uh, we're expecting from 
Uh, Eversource, they have a pretty good price hike come the winter. Uh, it's projected through. So over the 17 months, I'm hopefully, I'm accurate, but we might be able to uh, generate a savings of up to $100 a year. If people are nervous about this at all, the way the program works, unfortunately, we don't have a choice of opting in. The program as written by the state to allow this is you have to opt out. And I apologize again for that, but that's the only way the program works. And what this does is it, it locks in your rates. Um, I'll explain a little bit later on the meeting today is that the, the state is looking to change its solar and energy programs uh, to insist on the energy companies adopting more of these alternative energy sources. Unfortunately, these alternative energy sources all cost more than burning coal, et cetera. So therefore, the cost of energy is always borne by us at the end of the day. Those increased costs are going to be passed on to us over the next year or so. So this is basically, this is a long-term deal as far as I'm concerned. I wanted to make sure that we get in and didn't lose out because when the next time it rolls around, the savings will be more substantial. So don't be disappointed if it's not a big savings initially. You're going to have to wait through the 17 months to see what the actual net savings is. And if you're concerned, just simply opt out. But it's something that we're trying to provide a savings to the residents and to businesses. This is not available to the municipality itself. Any other questions for any of the board on that? I'm going to let him put it up on the thing right. so that they can get a... I just want to, you know, because people didn't, saw it and didn't understand it. I know, yeah, I know. They were pretty... Um, I got some some people that were confused, too, so... And it, it's, again, we should have done it last week. But it's as simple as that. And Derek's going to put it up on the screen, and hopefully we can get some pictures of it. Yeah, so okay. They won't get it until they get the money in anyway, so we can always. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, something else about uh, that people need to understand. There seems to be some confusion out there. Uh, whether Eversource is your electricity supplier or not, they are your electricity transmitter. They supply the electricity to the homes and businesses in town. So if you go with a different supplier, your electricity is not coming in off of different wires. It's still the, the, the Eversource controlled wires during a storm, uh, regardless of who's actually receiving the electricity or any of that or who you're getting billed by. It's Eversource's responsibility still to send out the line crews and repair the lines. So none of that changes. If you, if you stay in this program and we get one of those situations in the winter where we have a bunch of lines down, uh, you're not going to have to figure out how to repair the lines on your own or anything like that. Some people did seem to be concerned about that. But if you look at your bill, uh, whether it's from Eversource or not, you're going to see what the cost of the electricity is, and then you're going to see what the cost of the supply of the electricity is. And Eversource is the su electricity supplier. They own the poles, they own the lines, and they're the ones who take care of any issues. Yeah, and, and in fact, just so everybody knows, you, you often get calls on the phone with people trying to switch you over. Have you ever had those calls? They'll call you and say, oh, yeah, we can save your money on your electric bill and whatever. They're not saving you any of the Eversource part of that. They're just saving you on the cost of the electricity. And those things, those companies are probably pretty short-lived, whatever their savings is. Yeah. This is a whole lot of towns together buying electricity in a group. Makes a big difference. So, what do you got there? So, Mr. Chairman, just uh, if in the, in the press release and some of the information out, there's, there is a dedicated website to this, and it would be www.warehamcea, so that's charlieechoalpha.com. And on that website, you'll see uh, program details. There's an enrollment. There, there's everything right on to frequently asked questions which tells you what is the community electricity aggregation. If you have solar panels, what happens? Everything along the way, it's very informative. And for a lot of people that are concerned, if they just don't want to do it, perfectly understandable, on the website, and it's the second one from the right, you will see opt out. Simply click on the opt out. It'll, need your, it'll have name, email, telephone number, your Eversource 11 digit account number, 
and the rest of the information, which would be street address, city, zip code. And you can put a reason for leaving if you want. You don't have to. And at the very bottom, make sure you check, yes, I want to opt out of the Wareham CEA program. Submit, and you're all set. So again, that's www.wareham.cea, charlieechoalpha.com. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Alan? No, and the way this works also, if in 17 months we join the larger group and people who opted out, they can opt back in again. So this is really wide open, and it's, it's just, again, the idea was to, to offer the residents the opportunity for savings, not so much immediately, but this is a long-term project. Uh, the, what they call, if anybody has time, read a book called Peak Oil. It tells you that the cost of electricity through uh, fossil fuels, et cetera, is just going to continue to increase constantly over the next 20 years. And basically, you're going to end up with very large costs. So if there's a way to lock in your costs over a period of time, it's advantageous to do so. So, you know, again, we try and do things for the town because every time we turn around, something is coming up, like a new school, as an example, new police station, and I can keep going, and therefore we have to pay for it one way or the other. And um, in a meeting I had today, we talked about education, and it was really discouraging that between charter school you know, assessments, school choice assessments, et cetera, uh, everybody in the meeting up at the uh, State House today had the same complaints, all the towns from the MMA were up there. And um, our legislators uh, do not want to increase taxes at the state level because that's the way to get unelected. So what they've done is they've thrown it back to the cities and towns and they want us to do overrides to, to raise taxes that way, which is not the way to do things in life. So they basically passed, they passed the buck back to us at the lowest level to try and fix the issues. And I think uh, there was on the TV time. today, Governor Baker was up there talking about taxes and education, et cetera, and changing the foundation program. Um, there's, there's not any appetite to really make the money changes necessary the right way. So this is what we're dealing with. But again, we're trying to help you out. And, you know, as we always say, is, is we try and do good deeds. It doesn't always work all the time. Thank you, Alan, and welcome back. Jim, anything? Um, yeah, but before, just to um, emphasize that you're automatically in this program unless you opt out. Yes, you have to opt out. Um, there's a slight savings per kilowatt hour. And... Um, so th that, I think that's the key is if you don't opt out, you're in it. You have no choice. Um, also, last week I attended a uh, program by the Division of Local Services for new officials, um, finance forum, and um, that's through the, the Department of um, Revenue. So that was interesting. It gives you a, a, gave me a little basis on the process of uh, interagency cooperation and what they do and, and what the town does and setting tax rates and whatnot. And uh, there was a lot of, there was about 100 people from throughout the state. You know, there was finance committee members and um, assessors, some select men. So it was, it was good. It was a good program. They did a good job, and I appreciated that. Thanks. That's about All right. It. Peter? Mary? Nope. Okay, so a uh, couple things. Um, first off, we're going to have a summer schedule, um, and it's been sent out. I don't know if everybody's seen it yet, but um, if you look, there's a summer schedule <coughs> and the days that we'll be meeting through the summer. Uh, all of the, all of the uh, selectmen, I wish if you're going to be missing on a particular day or whatever, please let me know. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that I don't have too many people missing and I don't have a quorum. Okay, so if you could all let me know after you look at the schedule, the summer schedule, I'll appreciate it. That's uh, the press. I believe she sent stuff to you guys um, already, and I know it was sent to Bob, and I gave it to him today too. So that we'll be on a summer schedule at the end of this month, we'll, July and August, basically. Okay, uh, so if anybody needs to get anything done, remember, we got a summer schedule, you got to get it in. Next, um, I was able to attend... Uh, the graduation at the high school. Um, it was terrific. It was a lot of fun. Um, the kids were having a great time. 
Uh, it's nice to see the, the children um, that we are growing and graduating and sending off to all their new things um, and participate. And I hope that, um, you know, the board will uh, continue a process from now on of participating in it. Because it was absolutely fun. I, I declared a, a, proclama a proclamation to uh, make this, uh, the 7th as graduate day, which, you know, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but I'll tell you, everybody's pretty excited about it. Kids had a ball. They were, they were clapping and going crazy, and it was a lot of fun. And... Uh, it was fun to do. That's all I know. And, and I hope that uh, this board will continue to, to be part of it and to help support the children of the town. And uh, I, was, I was a little disheartened the fact that the class was so small. It looked to me about 80 children. I, I don't know exact numbers. 84. So 94. 94. Okay. So I, I counted. Maybe I miscounted. But it wasn't that many. And we've graduated a whole lot more than that in the past. And that's part of the problem that we're having with school choice and all that kind of stuff. And we really need to all get together, school, town side, everybody, and come up with a solution. Because it's costing the schools a lot of money, which in turn costs us a lot of money. And somehow we've got to come up with a solution. I don't know what it is. But we're, we're going to have to start talking about this. I keep saying it, but we don't. But we're going to have to because it is real problematic. There's over $3 million going out in school choice. $3 million. Just think about that number. The school had three more million dollars to use. It'd be considerable, wouldn't it? I see them all shaking their heads out there. For those of you who can't see at home, they're all like, oh yeah. All right, so hopefully that'll happen. But it was great time, and thank you for having me for, uh, for the school department, and I hope everybody will uh, participate in the future all right next up is uh, a point Patrick. excuse me yeah uh, also on the energy Eversource uh, sent out at least myself I'm sure other people a little uh, postcard saying sign up with us now and we'll give you one month free so it means they're pretty nervous about the whole program being adopted by the town but if they'll if they'll allow you to use the month of July or August when the AC is running crazy it might be worth staying with them for at least the a year anyways, but just so you know, that came out as well. I saw that in my mail uh, on Monday, which was kind of a surprise. So you know that this is competitive for them and therefore they're not too happy. Thank you. Okay, next up is appointments. Now we have some constables to appoint tonight and I wanna make all the constables aware that we are creating a new, um, a new program for constables and appointments. Uh, I'm working on part of it now. It'll get to the board probably in the next couple of weeks. This is the Show Me the Money program? Huh? Yeah. yeah. And uh, there may be a lot of constables that aren't going to qualify. So I just want them to be aware of that by the time it's all said and done. Um, and uh, probably the next couple of weeks you'll have it in your hand. I, I've kind of written it 10 times and tore up about 20 sheets. So I just, I'm trying to not be too tough on it, and, you know, but make sure that we get the money. <laughs> Which, by the way, it appears we're not getting. No, we're not. We didn't think so. So, so I mean, just, more than just two people are working. I know they are. Well, we have 20. We have 20 people on the books or constables. Yeah, but we're only getting money from two. Correct. And so the reporting is, is the process of reporting and how you do that also needs to be addressed. But um, would this go into effect this coming fiscal year? Yeah, July it'll be one. So they'd be getting letters saying, you haven't, you haven't paid us the money for this past year. Please remit, you know, the amount necessary. Yeah. Otherwise, you will not be reappointed. Yes. We'll get it in. We'll get this thing on the books before July. Get it all on in the books right. by July. And that means that they won't get reappointed come reappointment time, obviously. And, and um, um, if they're not paying, we may just drop some outright. We'll see how it goes, okay? Thank you. All right. Uh, it was actually good, a good catch of yours, Jim. Thank you. All right. Constables. All right. We have three constables up for renewal. So I move that we appoint Joseph Latimer, Herb Vandal Jr., and Thomas Zine Sr. to a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2020. Second. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. 
Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed, aye. abstaining. I'm going to abstain. All right, so it's 401. All right, next up is a hearing at 715. We're a little late, but okay. On a hearing for a renewal and modification of a shellfish grant W84 for, uh, well, it isn't actually Indian Cove right now. It will be uh, if, if it's approved, right? It's, uh, it's under your own names, right, Bessie? Yeah. Come on down. Um, could you open the hearing, please? I open the hearing of the shellfish license renewal for Bessie, how do you know? Second. Okay. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Roll call. Alan? Yes. Jim? Yes. Mary? Yes. Peter? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Okay, it's open. So tell us what you want to do. Um, the, the grant now is in uh, Dale A. Bessie <coughs> and Jim Michael Bessie. And uh, we have an accounting company that represents us and we have a law firm that represents us. And in re reviewing everything, uh, they feel as though because we are incorporated that we should have the company uh, titled as the, what, representative of, of the grant? Okay. All right. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> Another lawyer. That's what you need. <laughs> All right. So that's what they want to do. Is there any questions of the board, please? What's the modification? Okay. So it's change of ownership, again, please. Right? It's a change of ownership, basically. You're training from them to uh, an LLC that's called Indian Cove Aquaculture of Wareham LLC. That'd be the new name. Yes, and this is an existing LLC that holds other grants, so it's just a transfer of the individual grants, uh, <clears throat> the name of the grant, uh, into this LLC that already exists. Um, the other thing is, is if you change officers uh, or any of that, you have to notify us and so on and so forth, okay? Okay. Right. Right. As a, as a new um, LLC, is it, and I... How does the license work? Does it run um, a fiscal year? Does it run? No. No, it's a grant. From no, they're, today they're, till the next. It's a grant, but okay. So it's a whole new process, whole new group, um, um, a new application fee associated with a per acre. Mm. Is yeah, that, there's is a that couple how of it fees. Works? That's what, okay. There's a couple of fees. It's a. It's only a change. Uh, so, but there is a couple of fees, yeah. and it says that a hundred fifty dollar application fee and a forty forty dollar for the for the what do you call it? And I don't think you've paid that yet. So before she hands you this, you'll have to pay the money. I nobody's informed us we owed it yet. <laughs> well, they will. They will. Trust me, she's good at that. So when you go in there, it'll cost you one hundred ninety bucks. <laughs> okay. She says five hundred. Yeah. yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 Yeah, she, she put a nice little sticky on there for us to remind you <laughs> that you were going to be hit with a fee when you got in there. All right, go ahead, Jim. Nope, I'm, I'm good. Right. I just, okay. just kind of uh, informing myself on the process. Okay, yeah, that's good. But thank you. All right, any, anybody else? Nope. All right, can we close the hearing, please? So moved. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, excuse me, roll call. Sorry. Sorry. Yep. Alan. Yes. Jim. Yes. Mary. Yes. Peter. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Okay. Ro okay. Could I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the renewal of the shellfish license for Indian Cove Agriculture LLC of Wareham. Well, you're you're actually just changing the name to. It's renewal and modification. Renewal, and, renewal modification. and modification. There we go. I like that. Renewal and modification. That's a good one. Second. All right, motion made by Second. Mary, seconded by Allen. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? It's unanimous. Five zero zero. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Good luck. A application from South Shore <laughs> Race Management of Duxbury for the use of town roads. Is somebody here for that? Okay. Oh, they brought a posse. 
I guess you did. <laughs> For the Wareham Boosters 5K run on we Saturday, October 19th. Yes. We are the Wareham Boosters. South Shore Race Management couldn't be here tonight, so they asked us to come in their stead. So before so. we talk about that, can I just say I'm glad you enjoyed graduation. Thank you for coming. Oh, it was a lot of fun, yeah. And I, I look forward. I know you and I have had conversations. I look forward to lots of collaboration. Between I think the it's boards. a good idea. Yes. But tonight we're here for the Wareham Vikings Athletic Booster Club. So um, October 19th, they'd like to have a road race. Um, and Sherry has yeah. many more of the details, so she'll share those with you. Um, I have a map of the roads that we'd like to use. All right, bring Anybody it right up. It? Make it part of the record. Give it to the clerk, please. Oh, start at Wareham High School. Okay, yeah, got gotcha. you. Well, actually, we'd like to start at Celine View, where our new concession stand is, and then it's going to run down Kennedy and behind um, down Church through the Pinehurst area, and then back. All right. How's that new concession stand working out? Okay. Awesome. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really awesome. It was open during graduation. Okay, so we... were giving out water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were giving out water. We weren't selling it. Yeah. Be, uh, 250. All right. Any, anybody have any questions? No, is it sign off, police, EMS, all yep, that stuff? Yep, we've got EMS, police, Dave Bernard. It's all signed. Yep, it's all set. That's any other public, questions? All. all right, can I have a motion, please? I have a motion that we give permission to uh, South, Co Co South Shore Race Management um, for the use of town roads for their Wareham Boosters 5K run walk on Saturday, October 19th, 2019, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Per the uh, the uh, agreement, or the drawing. Per, yeah. per the drawing. Yeah. <laughs> um, could I have a second, please? Second. second. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Alan. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous, 5-0-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Come out and run. No, but you're not looking at us, are you? <laughs> She's trying to kill us. <laughs> no. Could I have the community events committee, please? Come on down. You're the next contestants. <laughs> all right. So what we're trying to do is kind of get all the committees in to give us a little, you know, whatever, just to keep us talking and together and so on and so forth. So you happen to be second on the list. <laughs> yeah, we hear we have Sandy Slavin to thank for that idea. You do have Sandy to thank for that, absolutely. Yeah, great. And Lots of things. Let it be noted, <laughs> let it note in the record that Alan has joined the committee and is sitting with the committee. I'm a voting member, that's why. Yeah. So he will uh, not be sitting with the board. All right. So I'm Lori Benson. I'm chair of the CEC. And with me tonight is Jean Connaughton, member at large. Hi, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows Jean. I know everyone. Yeah, she's great to have with me. So uh, we're just, as an update, we're just, you know, doing our thing, making awards. And um, we've made 30 awards to date to different programs that are sponsoring events in the community. And we're still advertising every week in the Wareham Courier for new applications because we'll keep <coughs> awarding money until we're out of money. So we still have some more money to award. And I brought a card that is um, publicity for the onset fireworks put out by the OBA. And it's an example of how their group is displaying our logo and we request that a group, when we give them money, either put our logo on something like this or, you know, a rack card, brochures, whatever they have, just to show that we sponsor them. But we also, this year, were able to make two of these wonderful banners that if we get really lucky, somebody might want to display it at their event. And Jean's going to help me show you the banner. Well, that's actually nice. Wow. That is nice, huh? That's a good job. Yeah, that's you can give that to me right nice now for the Meet Me at the Tremont event. 
I said, you can give that to me right now for the Meet Me at the Tremont event. I'll claim it. We, we do. <laughs> no, we do. We have I was just being sarcastic. It's not until the end of August, so. Yeah. But I'll have to remember. No. Nope. I'll let my dog guard it. Nobody will get it. We're good. Um. Uh, no, I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that's all I have to say. Did you want to say something, Jean? I do. I really wanted to just uh, mention, Laurie really has done a lot of work since she's been chairman. I wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, she's worked with Matt in technology and really un she's done a great job with our website on the, on the website. See? the town's website, it's really good. She's revised a lot of the letters going out, they're much better. And Linda, who isn't with us tonight, Linda does a great job. She meets every month with the accounting department and balances off all these forms. And we just have to come in and have to approve it. It really is neat. So they do a lot of hard work and they should be acknowledged for it. Um, we do have some other things we did. I guess that was it, I had, that was it. Yeah. Just for the purposes of uh, the folks may be listening and for the press, what are some of the grants you've given out? Be a good question. Go down the list. Should I um, say amounts? Or? No, just the, go right yes. down the list. The, just uh, highlight it. You know, you don't have to go crazy here. Trash. Uh, okay. Is one. Yeah, don't trash Wareham. The Cranberry Visitor Center. The OBA for numerous events and for fireworks. The Friends of the Wareham Library. Wareham Land Trust is new this year. Evergreen House is new this year. They're sponsoring a golf tournament. Um, Meet Me at the Tremont. We've been doing that for a couple of years now, giving them a grant. The um, Cape Verdean Festival. And for the first time in a long time, the Onset Blues Festival is not happening. So they, they're usually one of our largest grants next to the Cape Verdean Festival, but they're not having it this year. So we saved a little money there. And Wareham Historical Society. No, well, it's, um, well, the OBA is, they have a website now, so we give them some money towards keeping up their website. Seniors. Seniors and also the advocates for Wareham seniors. <coughs> Did I forget anybody else? <coughs> no. Okay, thank you. We also uh, went back and had Jimmy Potter come yes. talk to us because Jimmy set this up originally as a selectman. And we were trying to ask him when you put this together, what was the idea? What, what were you going to use the money for exactly? And in the discussion, he said, well, we're trying to look at things like town meeting to make it more interesting, more efficient, et cetera. <clears throat> when he came up and told us that, we immediately thought about the uh, basic, you know, the voting machines, et cetera. Uh, so we were actually going to a sponsor the first round of the voting machines, you know, as far as, you know, the, to go ahead and do it, you know, to cover the cost for the town to see how it worked out. Uh, what's actually happened is the company who does it has given us a first round free. <coughs> we don't have to put the money up at this time. We also put quite a bit of money into the, making sure the fireworks happen every year as well, which we didn't mention. So coming, if it works this fall, we'll be able to pay for uh, the spring town meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, very nice. So what, what's the range of, of grants monetarily? I'd say as little as $200 and as much as probably OBA may be as much as 10 with all their events. It varies. We have a $45,000 limit per year that we get from the town. And you use it or lose it, does it roll over? Uh, it rolls over. And then you get an additional 45, or is it capped? Every, every year, come the f it comes out of the hotel and motel tax right. money right. and comes out of parking funds. Thank you. We'll You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? No. No? no thank okay. You for well, that sounds easy. You do, yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. And serving. We appreciate it, and uh, we learned a few things. So and Thank you for your work. Thanks. And you as well, Alan.
Okay, so. You have to go sit over there to get a compliment from him. You're going to stay there? <laughs> you could have stayed there. Um, the audit committee's not here. You're the only one? Isn't, uh, what's his name on that committee still? Yeah, who's Mading? Bill? Bill is, about, Bill. Bill is about to become a Florida resident. He already has. Oh, really? All right, well, all right, let's talk about, let's talk to you about the audit committee, please. Okay, we put this together originally. Um, I think I actually organized and, and had the Board of Selectmen vote on it. Uh, back a few years ago, probably three, four years ago now, I think, maybe a little longer, I'm not positive. Uh, the idea was, and when it says audit committee, it's a misconception of what an audit committee does in this particular case. We basically would be involved if we had to hire a new auditing firm. We look at the audit report. Uh, again, the town administrator deals with all, all we're looking at is, is there anything that's unusual or anything that's, that's out of place. And basically, the audits over the last four years in particular uh, material weaknesses keep disappearing to the point there are no more material weaknesses, there are no issues. Uh, so for what we do, there is no work to do it at this point right now. So besides the fact that we have a couple people that have left town that were on the committee are no longer involved, I think at this point there's really no reason for an audit committee because we're at a point where unless we go back 180 degrees, there's nothing to do. Well, maybe we could just let it sit there and just we not fill the position. We can let it sit, but just so yeah. people understand that we're not doing anything because there is nothing right. for us to do. Okay, that's fine. Was was that committee created by the board of selectmen? Selectmen. Okay, that's why I'm saying we could well, we could sunset it. We, we can wanted. sunset it whenever we want. But it, it's it's a good idea to have it. I think it is. It is you if you have, have many members. Just just to review things and, and keep your, keep a extra set of eyes on. Yeah, what's but going again, on. when they when they come back, when the audit company comes back and says no material weaknesses, our job is done already. Someone's doing a good job, huh? Town administrator and, the, and all the yeah, department has needed. Uh, thanks. Yeah, the financial teams should do an amazing job. I mean, it's, it's all their hard work in the department. If, if you look back about eight years ago, where we were at and where we're at today, oh, yeah. it's unbelievable change. Yep. Thank the you. Unauditable, unauditable year. We had an unauditable year. That was a real shock and a half. Thank you. Well, okay, great. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Um, all right, so I just want to bring one thing up since uh, I kind of go backwards a little for you. All right, so they are talking about in October using voting machines at town yes. meeting. Yes, and that's going to happen now that Alan's back because he was involved in that. That's going to happen in October. One of the problems that are going to develop as a result of that is the speed in which we get things accomplished. Because in order for these machines to work, we have to have everything in them in place on town meeting floor That's right. there can't be any uh you know well we're going to have this not ready and whatever and i know this is going to be a little difficult mm -hmm. under the circumstances yeah but I'm, I'm going to ask everybody to kind of pull it together and see if we can make it happen for this one and then of course we'll have the change coming up which will make it maybe a little easier mr chairman i would ask that we have the gentleman in speak to about because i spoke to some okay. of the other communities that used them and they didn't say it was as draconian as what I've heard. So. All right, so why don't we get him in then? Yeah, I, I think we got him in. All right, we'll bring him in. He'll come in whenever you want. Yep, let's bring him in. We might as well. So. Let's, that's a good idea. Let's have a conversation we'll with him. Hear from the horse's right. mouth. Yep, right? we'll hear it from the horse's mouth. Better idea. Right. So, All right, no problem. We'll so do on, that. On, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that subject, what are going to be the, what will the dates be for warrant articles um, being, being, um, approved or, or submitted by the different well I can tell you um, we've had some there was some questions that came up um, in the planning board meeting last <coughs> night so if, if the different uh, I got boards here. can be notified that you know you have to have them in by this date so we can review them that, that would be very good to get that out there sooner tip, than tip, not. typically the drop dead date for uh, articles submitted by departments is around September 10th the 30th is the day we will open the warrant. 30th of July. Yeah. We'll be opening the warrant. And closing it. And uh, so then there's a number of days. What's the count? Right. I forget. You've got to be at least 45 I plus think 45. three days out, I think yeah. it is, is what it substantially Except comes out to. But you also have to remember that we, uh, we did do the change at the Springtown meeting, the charter change, which is going to impact those dates potentially if the Attorney General approves that 
that charter change. Which hasn't been approved yet. So, because the, the Attorney General has 90 days to review it from when it's submitted. So that's going to happen right around the same time we open up the warrant. So we'll know at, by the end of July what the deal is. So. Okay. It's just, I, th I think it's um, better to be sooner than later. So if it opens up on a certain date. Um, right now it'll be scheduled to open on June 30th, yeah. July 30th, sorry. Okay. All right. We'll let them know. Please. Right, Alan. I would suggest that we contact, <clears throat> send a notice out, you know, directly to any committee board or commission that will provide a, an article to come forward, or whether it's town department with the dates and everything, so everybody knows. Because what happens is in the summertime, the July. everybody kind of takes off, goes away, and we cut our schedule down. Before you know it, it's September and nothing's done. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna uh, kind of rush things up a little bit. Let's get this guy in here. I'll see if I can get him in right away, and let's just get a feel for that, and then we can go from there. Okay? We should. We should. Yeah, I'd love to hear from him about. The I'll process, get him in right away. Okay. What he needs. Um, what he needs and all that. I think we're meeting with Claire tomorrow. Claire's yeah. away, so you're not meeting with no, Claire. No, she's back. No. Oh, is she. Yeah. She's I, back and then going away. Yeah. She uh, was supposed to be here tonight. She couldn't come because she was not. Well, away. Derek, myself, and Claire are meeting tomorrow, I think, at 4 o'clock. And we'll, since Claire and I had this thing separately, talking about this for a while, so we'll st speak to Claire tomorrow and ask Claire, to, as the lead person, to contact the gentleman, get a date to come in and talk to us. Okay. If that's okay I just with the wanted, board. Yeah. I just want to just tip everybody off. I just want to make sure this goes off as smooth as it can, and then we can tweak it from there. So, okay? All right. Yeah, because I'm just, I mean, it's just a PowerPoint presentation that he has. And yeah, okay. We'll I, get him in here. Yeah. I'm just confused as to. Okay, next what? is to accept some donations from Andrea Mola, Milan, Milano? Malone. 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 Malone, right? Malon. Malon, is that how no you say e. it? There's no E here. So oh, that's right. Malin. There is no E. You're right. In the amount of, you know, that's why I send that stuff to you, because I know uh, yep. you're a grandma nutcase, so. I took over from Whiteside. <laughs> yeah. See, I, you know, I was thinking about it when I saw it the other day. Let me send this to Whiteside. And then I said, wait a minute, Whiteside's gone. So I sent it to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Funny. I move that we accept the donation of $100 um, to the Wayham Free Library in memory of George Shaw from Andrea Mallon. Okay. Motion made Second. by Mary. Seconded by Peter. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. abstaining. It's 500. Zero, zero. Sure. Vote on the appointment of David Morris as Director of Inspectional Services. Are you all set with that? <coughs> yeah, I think there's just a confirmatory because we okay. didn't have it on the agenda before. Move to ratify the appointment of David Morris as Director of Inspectional Services. You are here, second. Second. Or okay. Alan, first. Alan. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? I, I would like to know, is this a provisional appointment until he completes his certification as a, um, insp is a is for his inspection license? Uh, it's so there, in one year, if he doesn't complete it, then? There's two aspects to it, actually. By, via the contract, it, there's six months. You have an initial six months for any department head. And thereafter, we've given them one year with some leniency for the ability, for the availability of. An appointment date. Correct. And it's a sit down exam. Yep. There's three separate exams. Three He's already sitting for one. So. Good. Thank yeah. you. He's got to pass some all the rest right. of the job. Yeah, I just want people to understand we're not going to be uh, stuck with the same situation we had six or seven years ago. No, it's not even in the same ballgame. Yep. Just this a reminder, guy, he is eligible. This guy is eligible to sit for the exam. Right. Hey, just <laughs> it's a big there. difference. So everybody's on the same page. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's not completed and it's not close. Then. Yep. Well, when he's okay, uh, I'll send my resume out at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, <laughs> abstaining. It's unanimous. Five zero zero. All right. Any other town business not reasonably anticipated? Last forty eight hours. Anybody? No. All right. Okay. Town administrators' report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was going to bring this later because it's really, if you, if it's the board's pleasure, it's a town meeting article. But the um, the executors of the estate really want to know what our pleasure is. So simply, um, 
you know, any, any gift to the community is a, is a generous one. And this is uh, from the estate of Mr. Volpe, Paul Volpe, who passed. Uh, they have a parcel of land in Swift's Beach. And if you go through the fourth page, roughly is, uh, shows you it's a uh, little over half acre parcel. Valuation is $400. And that's because it's uh, marshland and such. So it's at the end of, uh, of uh, looks to be Belmont and Lake Street. Now, frankly, we could, we could turn it down, but I'm going to guess nobody's ever going to pay the taxes on this again. And we have to go through the headache of taking it via land of low value. So I would just say... You know, why not accept just the accept the gift, bring it to town meeting. We let them know that it's our plan to bring it to town meeting. And uh, that that would be my recommendation. I'll put it on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Um, Janet, put this on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I tell it all the time. She calls me in the morning and she'll say, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You're going to have to say Cassie pretty soon. Awesome. Yeah, I will. Who? And she'll have Cassie. to say Cassie because Cassandra. Janet will be gone. Uh, what else you got? Wareham Girls Soccer Association, as you know, they have a license to use the other portion of Westfield that Wareham Girls Softball Association doesn't use. Uh, this license, it's, it's for no, no fee or anything. One of the big reasons is since we don't have a recreational department, these groups and organizations have come up and instead of that they're creating a recreation right. fund. so one of the ways we can support them is through the uh through allowing them to use town property and if you remember the gift of westfield was there was recreational purposes yep. in the, um so the girls soccer association will be bringing forward a request to community preservation yep. now it's sort of the interesting thing is since they have the license they technically have control so they're going straight to community preservation and uh, it's not going through that initial sort of phasing process. I think it's six and one half dozen of the, or the other. For? About $70,000, I believe it'll be fencing and doing, doing some other items there. Okay. So. Isn't that fenced off in the front already? All the way down uh, there's the port furnace? Yeah, there's portions are. All the way down where, where the fields are. Yeah. the woods right no there there's certain it doesn't it cut like back in i don't know it's fenced it across in, the parking yeah. lot in a thing like that oh it goes all the way down the road the fence does i think but mm. anyway i could be wrong on that i would like to see i haven't seen the proposal i just <laughs> yeah. found out i just found out today yeah. um about it which and i think it's fine we did it with the girls softball uh association beforehand but i just wanted to wanted you to know why it's not coming through me to, to go to community events, uh, I mean, community right. preservation. How okay. long is that license for? There's Perpetuity or is it? No, a license is revocable as well, really isn't any time frame. And um, every year I give them another license roughly. So, and that keeps in the parameters of a license. Yeah, we definitely don't want to lease. So. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, actually, I went to the uh, with the planning community development director, Mr. Buckland, and we met with member um, of uh, Bob from Mass Audubon at the Sacred Heart Seminary today. What a piece of property! It's mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive. Uh, obviously the support the the first thing i want to let you know is how much they spoke about and raved about the support of the community the donations that poured in for them to buy that facility after it was a re, uh, initially getting the conservation restrictions or easements on um, of the other portion but they still there's going to be a lot of work and support that needs to get into the next phase <laughs> of that as well and they're they're such good people that you know they're they're not the type that bangs down the door for people, but we know they're going to need help to to continue on and finish what they want to do at the location. So I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up if you saw me driving around that area. Uh, the other item is uh, something that's been brought up. We have talked about it. Uh, 
this is where Mass Audubon is uh, goes back on goes back on my list of giving me headaches. It's it's the piping plovers over at Little Harbor, and right now we are not allowed to rake uh, rake the beach. We we have talked to them about essentially having spotters there, which would allow us to rake through some of the sections but it looks like they would want us to start a maintenance plan of roughly two to $3,000 maintenance and monitoring plan. And that would be annually. So uh, we yeah. certainly had not considered that in this late of the, the process. But what I, I really wanted to let people know was there was, uh, there was sort of this concern that Little Harbor gets the wrong end of the stick, if you will as it is only a residence beach that is absolutely not true and couldn't be further from the truth so one of the one of the uh plovers uh fledging at this point what's the anticipated don't need their nest anymore date they uh they hatched uh, um i believe or they uh they were nesting late May, so I think you've got about roughly 35 days. They, they usually figure thereafter. So we're not far away from it right now. And I understand it because it's a gorgeous beach and it's tough. I was out there today looking at the shells and, and seaweeds. It was a higher tide, so most of the seaweed wasn't showing. In that beach, we can clean it today. And tomorrow, there's a, after high tide, there's a load of seaweed dropped off. So it's maybe, tough. Maybe, maybe the the program with Audubon, the, the bird spotting program, is something you might want to consider for next year if that'll get the beach open sooner. I, I agree at this point, there's almost not enough time to, you know, we've got what, another 20 days and hopefully the birds are out of there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't invest in it now, but I would certainly consider doing it next year so we can get, and it's not a matter of opening the beach, it's a matter of cleaning the beach so that, you know, people can spread their blankets and use it like a beach. That, that's when they're cleaning the beach with the machine. You need the spotters, correct? Right, the surf rake and stuff like that. Right. So. so normally you have, what, one one man out there? You usually have yeah, one person in the uh, sur surf rake. Maybe somebody, you pick up the debris later. If you remember, there's a, um, a concrete section where they drag all the debris right. and material to. So, do you, do you have to be like a certified bird spotter or or is that what they would prefer I, and could we hire um a college student mm. to to do this no you have Let to be a certified summer, bird summer work study program yep. I, I, i'm assuming that we hire summer stu summer uh, employees children and college kids in town to to do some of the work and you know get ahead on projects whether it's through municipal maintenance or I read the thing. You have to be certified to. to I was going to volunteer myself, Jim, to be out there spotting. But Commonwealth <laughs> says you have to be a certified spotter. Yeah. I I don't. I didn't read that. Yeah. So. It, there's a section I'll there. Read it. I read the thing, but I'll read it again. Oh, yeah. I'm just, you know, and um, did, if I if I'm correct, did uh, one of our people do that last year? Kimball is it? In fact, Josh Kimball. Yeah. And you said he wouldn't be available or. To do that, uh, Jim, I don't know. I That's thought you wrote it. No, oh. I didn't. She said she'd spoken. The lady said she'd spoken okay. with Kimball before. I just don't know if he was the, the spotter. I, think. I mean, he's the assistant ACO. That might that might count for something. But yeah, and it's really right now. Is, are the kids out of school yet? No. No. So uh, it's just really just the weekends that we'd need the <laughs> yeah. cleaning, right? So. To get the weed up uh, yeah usually that's what you do is you hit it yeah. either saturday morning or some point on friday and you know it starts stacking up but you hit it for the for the weekends we don't do daily cleanings anymore unfortunately so we got a year to plan for it really yeah do what we can patch it up this year if you can yeah yeah one second uh and I'm not making bird jokes, so I'm staying and, away and from it. Very good. Good, mister. <laughs> and at least we're not out there shooting foxes like uh, Duxbury is to protect the piping plovers. They issue uh, permits for people to take dune buggies and pick up trucks and whatnot, and they get a handsome $300 per permit. Rather than tell the uh, people who bought the permit, sorry, you got to wait for the piping plovers to hatch and get out of the way and everything else, uh, they still want their people out there 
riding around and uh, not complaining about paying for the permits, so they decided to shoot the foxes who tend to uh, eat the piping the plovers instead. The so the at least we're not in that situation. Um, you know, it was funny because I was on a dune tour down in Provincetown one time, and the beach was mostly closed at Race Point for piping plovers. Seems like every beach on the Cape now gets closed for piping yep. plovers. Yep. That's and they pulled us up to the top of this hill and they said, we can't go anywhere down that end because the piping plovers are there. And I looked down the way and I see this guy standing there and he's got his hand on a gun and there's a fox and he's just about to get into the plover eggs and he's going to shoot the fox. And, you know, I'm sorry, folks, <laughs> but we don't all you have to do. Let's scare the fox away. I don't know something, but I don't know why we're playing God and who gets to eat and who doesn't. That's all I know. Fox lives matter. <coughs> all of us started yelling and screaming to scare the fox away. You know, it's ridiculous. I'll give you a simple example on this. The, uh, I can't stand it. it drives me crazy. Friends, we had a place down in North Beach, and uh, basically everybody drives down their four-wheel drive vehicles, and there's homes all along the area, camps, etc. When the plovers are basically there like that, they don't only shut the thing down, they shut your access so you can't get to your house. So if we're allowed to go ahead and still use the beach and just we can't use the raking, we're way ahead of the game compared to most of the communities. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know the rules are tough. There's no games on the Cape. I don't know that we should be shooting other animals. But Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Anything else? Just a reminder that July 1 starts the short-term rental uh, occupancy tax for the for the Department of Re and it's the Department of that. Revenue that collects it. It's not us. Yeah, we just they, get it later. Yeah, you just get it later. So, I, uh, reminder: don't get yourselves in trouble. So. I rented a place in Martha's Vineyard, like I usually do, and the woman says to me, "Now, I'm really sorry about this, but there's a tax, and the tax was relatively expensive, like 700 bucks or something. It was something crazy." Yeah, it's big money, because big money to rent out there. Decent money. Same it was as, like $700. Same right? as a hotel. And I said to her, she says, I know I've had a lot of my customers that had to find other rentals because they can't afford the extra with the tax. And I'd rented this before. And she says, can you handle the tax okay? And I said, yeah. I said, I'll, I'll take care of it. She says, I've, I, she says, I had a couple that were close, and I gave them a discount. Yeah. Big money. Well, don't forget, not only that, but when you go to the different communities, they're adding money too. Well, the Cape is. Cape and Islands has a 2.75% 2 2 water protection fund on top yeah. of it. Yeah, so they're adding extra money besides. Well, that mon money is going toward their uh, water Rest pollution uh, requirements that they have to put throughout the Cape. What's that get up to like 10%? Yeah, it's big money. Yeah. By the time you pay, it, it comes to. 5.7% is the uh, is the state. We're we're six percent is the local, and then there's an additional three percent impact fee, which we did not implement. So. See that? If you think of all that, it's impact expensive. Fee for the short-term rental. Yeah. Yeah. There's a community impact fee of zero to three percent, which is uh, imposed on short-term rentals, and it depends on whether the the community votes it to accept that. We already, since we already had the local option for um, hotel motel excise, we were automatically grandfathered in for the other, the other portion of the short-term rental. So, and this is the, I think this is it's, the first fee I haven't. If I'm not mistaken, it comes to around nine something percent, right? It would look like All together. So, we'll have to see how, what transpires over the year. I would think for for return on the short-term rental for the town. This is one of them. If you remember, we did not budget these funds because even oh, there was no, no way to calculate. Yeah, just just kind of a point of interest in the sense of how how efficient and effective will it be? Yeah. Well, how effective to collect it is one of the problems. That's what I'm saying. The collection is the issue. Although they're all there, they sh she certainly added it on, and she said they're all doing it on the island. Yeah. So, you know, because they're getting the extra 3% too, you know. So I think it's almost, it's 9 point something percent. 9.3, something <coughs> stupid like that. It's big money. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, if you can afford $4,000 for a summer rental, then. If 
for them. <laughs> well, they <laughs> expensive. Ten the percent. Cost a lot of money over there. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Once you get on the ferry, you're a tourist. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. I'm a tourist like everybody else. Exactly. I've been a tourist there for years in a row. So. Yep. And now, unfortunately, I've had the longest segment of the night, so I will be quiet. You're going to be quiet? Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to liaison reports. Had the longest segment. Jim. Um, <laughs> yeah, I went, I went to, I stopped in at open space and planning last, I stopped in open space and planning last night. Um, just seeing what's going on. And I think everybody got their copy of um, the Municipal Advocate. That's kind of fitting. I just started uh, attending the initial um, recycling and uh, being on the, the liaison to the recycling committee and also on the um, district, um, the waste district, that, uh, you know, recycling and solid waste addressing the crisis. So it's not, you know, it's just, not just Wareham and the position we're in. It's a state, it's a country, and, and we have to be smarter about how we address it and do it. Um, so I'll be sitting down going through this. And uh, also there's a meeting of the um, regional district coming up at the end of the month. I will ask to get the date posted on the calendar in the place. It's going to be in Carver, I believe, this month. Yeah, they rotate, rotate around. Yep. Is it the 26th? I can't, yeah. I can't recall offhand, and I don't want to give a bad ass. Yeah. No, I don't know. So. But we'll get that posted so people will know. Thank you. All right. Uh, J Jim, what I was going to say, too, is that it's, it's, it's the world, too, when you see the Philippines sending trash back to Canada because <laughs> they go recycling back to Canada. So. Yeah, it's, uh, you gotta do something with it. Yep. <laughs> okay, Alan, you're on. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead. <laughs> he's, he's been doing this, looking at me. <laughs> Go ahead, Alan. Uh, this is a Fun Day Tuesday in I Boston. I know it's Fun Day Tuesday, so. <clears throat> so. I knew we were in trouble. Well, it wasn't too bad. Um, <laughs> The MMA has a Suffolk program for training employees, you know, to increase their skills in all different levels for municipal government. So um, for Derek, just if we have anyone in town, they're looking for more students to sign up for their programs. Um, yeah, they turned us down for one employee recently, which was unfortunate. So you find out why. Let me know. I'll look into it for you. Um, the benchmark, which is the uh, revenue for the state, is still just a shade under one billion dollars ahead of the actual benchmark, which means there's gonna be a substantial surplus. Most of the surplus will go into the state stabilization fund uh, because they expect sometime that monies won't be available and they need that money when that time comes. There'll be a portion though that will be available to add into hopefully chapter 90, chapter 70 other pieces as well. Uh, Lottery revenue is up also, so there'll be some more money coming to the general fund that way. The House and Senate have wrapped up their budgets. School finance, we talked about uh, updates, factors for certain costs, low-income students, English language costs, etc. The state's going to basically pay $30 per student minimum aid. Uh, if you have a lot of economically disadvantaged students, we could get more money through a grant, so we need to look and see if that actually comes to the schools or not. Uh, again, Wareham should see. There's approximately 70 towns uh, at this point here are gonna get less money than they got last year in Chapter 70, and I believe we're close. To, I know overall we're less, but I think we're close as well on that. Uh, the special circuit breaker, again, is short and underfunded, and the circuit breaker has to do with all the SPED programs, et cetera. Charter schools are creating havoc for most of the school systems in that the uh, costs that come back out of the town for the charter schools uh, is basically not even coming close to the reimbursement coming back the other way. Um, CPC program is gonna get an additional $36 million <clears throat> in funding for this coming year. There's a program for fire safety equipment uh, available to the districts and stuff, which. Uh, we don't talk to them directly, but I'll let them know. Civil service, they've been talking to them about changing some of the things there. There was a discussion about the frequency of exams. I'm not sure how that affects uh, Derek, uh, but they want to increase the frequency to make it easier. 
uh, lateral hiring and certificate list gendering listing and interest by listed by county rather than by individual may make things a little bit easier housing choice bill is coming <coughs> uh, marijuana draft regulations mm. uh, the uh, delivery the social clubs etc we probably are going to have uh, base draft regulations by the end of the month but just so everybody knows they will not be officially in place at best until Labor Day. So anybody who's applying for social clubs or anything on that particular venue, there are no rules and regulations in place, and there's nothing we can do at it at all until once we know what's happening, which is gonna be at least Labor Day. So we have that one group that I think talked to the town about their restaurant, et cetera. You know, social club, the rules are not in place for that. Okay, so we, we don't have to give them a host agreement. No. Um, <laughs> so all there's to it. <coughs> there's a change in the House Bill number 2740. Uh, has to do with repetitive request by same individual for public records uh, involving broad dissemination. So that's something that uh, the clerk's office should be looking at. The governor is going to file an additional bond bill for transportation. I don't know how much it's going to be yet. There was nothing finalized today. Uh, there's a new Green Works bill. Uh, that's coming through. It's a 10-year bill uh, program with $1 billion involved with it. Um, and this Greenworks bill will basically, uh, we'll have to watch very carefully what it does and what it covers because as a green community, we're already in the base there and there may be a lot more things available, but that's a lot of money being put out. That bill number is 3846. I mentioned earlier about there's a new solar alternative program coming down the line. It has to do with smart energy. And basically, the energy suppliers are required to have all different levels of alternative energy in, into their systems, and they can't just bypass it. They're going to have to increase it more. The problem there is, at the end of the day, you and I all pay for that higher cost of that energy. So that's coming. The state's mm -hmm. made a real strong commitment on that as well. Uh, the bond cap at the uh, local governor's advisory council meeting uh, is $4.7 billion for the state. Mass Works, just for information, is funding at $200 million this year. Uh, for Chief Walchek, there's a bulletproof vest program that the state just put in place. Uh, there's no wait on that. They can apply any time they want if they need bulletproof vest. Uh, they don't want to wait at all. Anybody needs them, they go ahead and apply for it. Um, small bridge program is continuing in place again, but again, the small bridge program only goes up to 20 feet in bridge length, and the culvert program, uh, both are underfunded badly and of course we have one bridge i think it's 25 feet uh which doesn't cover the program and that, that could use up three years of our uh, chapter 90 funds if we have to fix it and the last thing is the chapter 90 funds are still at 200 million dollars which is grossly inadequate for what we're trying to do i try to explain about the inflationary effect and what that was really worth and i got in trouble again as usual they didn't like my thought process and uh there's a new Secretary for Energy. Uh, she has a new climate control vulnerability program, but there's only uh, $10 million in funds coming for the MVP program for the coming year. So if uh, Mr. Bucklin and Mr. Sullivan have anything going on there, we need to get the, the grant request in real soon because there's way too many communities gonna be involved this time. They only had 60, I think, last time around. They're expecting 260 applications this time. For the MVP? Yeah. I know, but I'm just saying we got to really watch it. And that's it for the day. All right, thank you. Um, we did Jim. So. Peter. Yeah. No? What, Mary? What are we doing? No. No? Okay, well, we're going to move right along then. Let's move right along. Authorization to sign bills and documents. Uh, oh, and we have a bill, I see. Do. Do we have a bill? Yeah, we're going to have to pay the attorney. Must have gambled up in Montreal. He spent a lot of that attorney, not this attorney. Paid a lot of money on his five and a half million, five and a half hour ride, I think. All right, I move that we uh, pay this bill here for Attorney Richard Bowen. Second. Okay. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose. It's unanimous. Approval of minutes. I have a few minutes here. Um, I move that we approve the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen 
Uh, for April 22nd, 2019, all of us were here. Second. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstaining, it's unanimous. Um, I move that we approve the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen for June 4th, 2019, and we were all here. Second. Well. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any more discussion? I wasn't here June 4th. You weren't here, right? No. On the 4th? June 4th? Oh, it says you were here. All right. Were you here on June 4th? No. I don't think so. No. Oh, take him off. No, he wasn't. No. All right. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstaining, of abstain course, with the correction. Yep. Yes, with the All correction. All right, and one abstention. So it'll be 401. And I also um, move that we approve the Board of Selectmen Executive Session meeting minutes for May 14th, 2019. Hold. Let's hold those for. And hold. Uh, hold those for when we have an executive session again. We, you say. Hold uh, yes. Discussion. And hold. Yes. Okay, That's and hold. There okay. you go. All right, executive session and hold. Do I hear, uh, do I have a second, yep, Peter? Yep, second. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any more discussion? We're, we're not gonna, we're not voting on this, so we're holding the minutes period because Jim wants to discuss something on the minutes and we can't do it in public. So we'll wait till the next executive session. Oh, you have something on the minutes that you wanted to discuss? Some discussion and I, I wrote um, Alan, uh, emailed him, because we wanna, don't wanna email the entire board. Why would you write Alan? I'm the chairman. Why would you not send it to me? Because he sent the minutes. So I was questioning something he put in the minutes. He didn't put anything in the minutes. Who wrote the minutes? The minutes. You take the minutes, don't you? Alan sent the minutes to her, and she types them, and then they give them to us. So if you have a question. Do you, do you, uh, do you type the transcript here? That's, he types it here. He doesn't tape it. It's not an audio tape. There's no audio tape. It's all no. done right. by typing, yes. So, so on, in the process, we can talk about the process. Well, it should go here. through you. We should, probably should. It should go through Patrick because it's, an, it's a question about an agenda item. It's and not, it's, it's not how, how the item is prepared. It's how it gets on the agenda. And especially if it requ it's an executive session because I need to make arrangements so that you can deal with it. See, I'm only here to help it's, you. I'm trying okay. to facilitate it that, for that, you. That's that, all. That's good. Well, if we're not going to deal with it, why don't Ellen we... I can't facilitate it for you right now, but I can, and I'm trying to facilitate it so that you can get what you need. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's important well, I that I know. I understand what you're saying. Okay. That's all. It's not to I, scold you uh, or make well, you feel bad okay. or anything. I, it's just it so that I can make sure you get what you so need. What, what I'm saying is, seeing he takes the minutes, maybe he had a different opinion well, he, what transpired. So I was trying to say, is this what occurred? Seeing he's a person who takes the minutes, not yourself, not Peter, not yes. myself. But he and I also believe it would probably be best to have an audio recording of the executive minutes and, um, and transcribe them from there through our secretary so he can participate fully in executive meetings. We'll, t we'll talk. We we'll, can talk about we'll that. Talk about we'll talk about, that. about process. Let me put on hold. If you want to vote me, on it, we'll, we'll vote forward and I'll let vote me, how I let feel. Let me make something can. clear to you, for you so you'll understand, okay? He can't change the minutes himself. He turns in the minutes. He can't change them, okay? Right? The minutes come in front of the board and we'll discuss it in executive well, session and then you can say, well, I thought I saw this, but somebody else may say, oh, no, you said that. You see what I'm saying? So there needs to be some discussion within the meeting to change the minutes. And where there are executive why, minutes, exactly, you have to have, to have that discussion. Executive session. We so, haven't voted on them yet. No, no. it doesn't matter. But you have a question about them, so. We had them presented, the correct? We had them presented as this is what the clerk, you know, the clerk, though, you just, <laughs> he's a person that volunteered to do it. The note taker. <laughs> and um, believes was in the minutes, which are, you know, what he believed were the minutes. Well, he typed and them as we them were as talking. We're doing, correct. He typed so them as we were I, talking. So we'll discuss this in executive exactly. session, but I believe it would be best to have an audio tape and... Um, well, I don't believe anybody will, will go along with audio taping executive sessions. And then have our um, confidential uh, 
administrative assistant type the minutes is that allowed is is, is that like illegal to do that or no there's nothing illegal about anything we can right. do whatever we choose so. we uh, can do whatever we choose you know. yeah, no, but, yeah. but we'll talk about that in executive session i'll withdraw my second i withdraw my okay so you know what so we're just going to we'll hold wait. these yeah until i get it until the next executive session okay right. and, then, and then that way your issue can be addressed exactly well, I'll be done anyway. all right Thank okay you. All right, next up, I think that's it. How do you like that? We're Move at the end adjourn. of the meeting. Like Made it? It a motion to adjourn by Peter, seconded by Alan. All in favor, say aye. aye. Oppose, aye. abstaining. It's unanimous. Thank aye, aye, you, aye. and have a great week, Wareham. That's what I say, aye, aye, aye. aye.